Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. This is a very special interview. It's not that my other interviews aren't special, but every once in a while you meet someone who is uh, is past the, you know, you go from 1 to 10 about a person. Well, he's way beyond 10. So it's important to just sit back, relax, listen to a young man who has just, has he doesn't know what no means. He just says, okay, I'm going to do everything I can. Every day I'm here, and he wants to encourage everybody else to do the same. But, Scott, it's such a pleasure, Scott Chesney, to speak with you. I know you're calling in from New Jersey, and you you have a lot of interviews, don't you? This is is, is not unique to you. Uh, it's not, but it's always a pleasure to, to connect with new people. So it, it's such a joy and a pleasure to connect with you, Anita, and your listeners. Thank you. Well, I of course, Scott knows that this is a South Florida show, and it's not that he's foreign to South Florida. He did live and work in Miami for a few years. Of, of course, you've all known that we had the Cure Symposium and we had the Project to Cure Paralysis, some of the people from there. And and so maybe we'll just let Scott tell you the story. We'll get that started in his words, and then we'll go from there. Absolutely. I have to tell you, though, a lot of people tell me, Anita, is that why in the world did you ever move away from Miami, Florida. You're supposed to get smart and stay down there, um, especially this time of year when it's so cold and everything. I always think about, you know, why it is that I came up north, but everything happens for a reason. So, um, no, my, my, my journey has, has taken me to a lot of places. It's brought me down to Miami, Florida, and as you mentioned, working with the Miami Project to Cure Paralysis. And now, uh, today, um, just being one of those wonderful ambassadors to the Christopher and Dana Reed Foundation and uh, all of this really came about as uh, um, one of those many positive results from uh, becoming paralyzed myself at age 15 back in 1985. So I've just celebrated, and I talk about celebrated, uh, celebrated my 30-year anniversary of being paralyzed and being in a wheelchair. And while I wouldn't trade one moment out of those 30 years of being paralyzed, it's, it's one of those things that has taught me a lot of lessons, but it's also been filled with a lot of pain and a lot of challenges as well, and both of which has helped me grow. And, and now through my ambassador role for the Christopher and Dana Reed Foundation, I, I wish to share those experiences and share all the wonderful information that they continue to provide people so that they could really help them enhance their quality of life. I'm, You know, as a gerontologist, I was thinking what you were saying, and there are many people who have had strokes as an elder person, and they're not quite paralyzed many of them just have a lot of difficulty in moving their arms or legs and it's a big struggle for them some have great attitudes and they just fight it and sometimes 10 years later they're still fighting but they're going and some people just go and go into a wheelchair and just exist so you're being a motivator is is a perfect thing for our listeners so that you can help them think differently about their situation. Well, I always I always share with people the only place a true disability can reside is in one's attitude, and that's a choice. And there are people who are mentally fine, who are physically fine, and so forth, but choose. And I use that word uh, directly, is that we, we choose to disable ourselves through our attitude. And um, it's really tapping into that strength that I believe that we all have. I believe that we have access to an amazing amount of energy, amazing amount of courage, amazing amount of resiliency. Um, but yet some people don't dive into that. And I'm not here to judge anyone, but there, there's a great quote, Anita, that I'm always reminded of. It's that pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional is that we all experience pain, and sometimes in that moment we feel like it's the end of the world. But we look back on it in any type of painful experience, whether it be living with a disability or living with an aging loved one and going through the challenges that he or she may be going through, a a relationship loss or um, losing employment or financial issues, is that it's where we we, we have these painful experiences, um, but it's the suffering that is a choice. And um, a lot of people will uh, respond to that by saying, well, you don't know my life. You don't know how challenging it is. 
uh, to which I usually respond is, I, I don't. I will never walk in someone's two same shoes or push in another person's chair. But all I can say is that with every person that I have met in my travels, and as I mentioned to you earlier, I've been to 38 countries, and I've been blessed with everything I've been able to do in my life, is that for every one thing that you tell me is challenging about your life, I'm going to tell you that there's 10,000 things that are wonderful about your life. And it's, it's about getting to that place of gratitude. And with the challenges we're facing today, I could bring up dozens of people I've met around the world, Anita, who are going through far more challenging situations, who are choosing not just to survive in their lives, but are choosing to thrive and are just, just on so many different levels achieving happiness and prosperity and success and whatever it is else they want to create. And it all comes back to beginning with that positive attitude. I can see why you're motivating people. You are a great speaker. And let me tell everyone, if you've just tuned in, you're listening to Scott Chesney. He's a speaker, a coach, consultant, and he's the ambassador with the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. Are they located in New Jersey, by the way? They're actually, I'm quite fortunate, they're in Short Hills, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. which is uh, not far from where I live. And um, it's a combination of a foundation. And then underneath that, they have a paralysis resource center. And these were obviously the, the results of when Christopher became paralyzed in the late 90s. And unfortunately, he and Dana passed away. But Christopher was so focused on uh, rising and getting out of that wheelchair and bringing back movement to his own body and sensation to his own body, but helping others to regain movement and sensation. And during that time is that Dana, who um, we always say behind every good man is a great woman. I think great women are in front of us, but um, they're not behind us anymore. But uh, Dana was the one who was fielding a lot of phone calls and fielding a lot of messages and notes and people saying, while I think it's so admirable and wonderful that your husband is so focused on finding cures and more effective treatments for paralysis, Um, Many of us have been living with paralysis for years, decades, so our quality of life is so important. So Dana championed that and basically, together with Christopher, said we're going to channel 50% of our resources to finding more effective treatments and ultimately cures for paralysis, and the other 50% are going to go to quality of life initiatives. We we have raised um, over $19 million for quality of life grants. We've given out over $19 million since 1999 in quality of life grants. They just help people, whether it be in education, whether it be in athletics, whether it be in music. We're getting proposals all the time for things that people are looking to do in which does not focus on the limitations, in which paralysis does put on people, but yet going to those levels of what's still possible. And, and that's what Christopher's legacy was all about. That's what his spirit is all about, together with Dana. And so I, I'm just thrilled to be part of such an organization that continues to, to fight the good fight. Their, their slogan just says it all. I need mean, a today, today's care, tomorrow's cure. Dealing with the here and now with our quality of life initiatives, but, you know, keeping an eye on cutting edge research, funding incredible research in this country and around the world. I'm so glad that I'm talking to you because for many years I have I love science and I have always read about the scientific explorations into people who are paralyzed and how there with all the technology we have that there has to be something that is missing that they just haven't figured out, but they, they will. There's something because of course being down, I, I did spend a little time down at the center uh, in Miami and I, I see what they have been able to do, you know, with all these pulleys and the various things. And, and I know since it's a neuro, since it's a neurological problem, I, I believe, isn't it? And, and if you could just get into the brain and figure out how to, manipulate um I, i'm so interested in this and i know you're so interested and you're right in the middle of it but uh do you believe also as i do that there will be a way that when someone's paralyzed they can figure out how to get that body moving again well i think they're doing it already i know uh, the Reef foundation big idea um as we call it is that they have taken four 
um, men um, and have been able to help them regain movement. The big idea involves uh, an epidural stimulator. It's basically placed on a part of the cord. It's an implant and so forth, but it's allowing people through the stimulation of one spinal cord to bridge that damage barrier. Again, paralysis can result in, um, and we usually think of an accident or injury that's damaged that spinal cord in which we're looking to bridge that gap, but it could also be an illness. It could be, um, it doesn't have to be a traumatic experience. So, um, but what we have found out with these four individuals, and now we're going back into looking at probably close to 40 more that we're going to be putting through um, the testing is that this is one of those cutting-edge research programs that um, the Reef Foundation has funded that is allowing people to um, regain use uh, of their legs, regain use of different parts of their body in which um, was left paralyzed as a result of the accident, injury, or as I shared before, some type of illness. And it's just fascinating. The challenge that presents itself is that, Anita, is that while we talk about more effective treatments, and I say that plural, and cures, unfortunately there's not just one, I I believe, um, remedy out there. Because if you were to take everyone to MRI, who um, is paralyzed, and put them up on a screen, you would see that they're no two alike. So to say what one treatment may work for one person, it may not work for another, but we're, we're finding, especially with the big idea right now, is that this is something that's it's pretty universal. And while we've had a small sampling, it's been an amazing, um, uh, successful journey so far. I, I will share with you this, is that at our annual gala, we call it a magical evening that we have in the fall each year, our largest fundraiser is that there was one of the gentlemen who had been through um, the original testing through the big idea. And it, it, the gentleman was a quadriplegic. And now for those of you that might not be uh, well-versed in quadriplegic compared to paraplegias, quadriplegia is when there's been an accident or injury or some type of illness in the neck portion of your spinal cord. So it's the cervical area. And what that does is that on a very, um, and it could be a much broader, but at its very basic, is that you can't do almost like a gripping motion. You can't bring your fingers together and do that. And you might say, wow, that's that's pretty big. If you think about all the things we do from a gripping and a grasping motion, I know that's a lot of what we talk about when it comes to independence in our lives. So this was a gentleman who could not do that before the big idea. I did not know he was a quadriplegic. I met him for the first time in a magical evening um, last fall, and... He shook my hand and almost crushed my hand, Anita. No I, kidding. You shouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> with everything that I've heard, with people regaining the use of their legs, standing again, that, in my 30 years of being paralyzed, is what I was most impressed by. So how did, how did that happen? It, it's through that epidural stimulator that's implanted. Now, he has a switch in which he can control and so forth, and we're looking to elongate that so the amount of time that he's able to um, to possibly move his legs, but that gripping mode. So what I'm saying is that when he gripped my hand and shook it, that stimulator wasn't on. That's been an effect of him having that stimulator on for a number of hours, for a number of days and months, <laughs> and hopefully it's going to be years, and there's been more improvement that's come back. But, see, that's the thing, Anita, is that most people, when they see someone who's paralyzed, they think, wow, that person can't move, that person can't walk is that if you ask someone who's paralyzed, and I can't speak on behalf of anyone else, but generally people will say, you know what, I want my bladder back. I want my bowels back, sexuality function, all these things that are the hidden um, things about uh, a disability that people don't see, yet when it comes to a quality of life, when it comes to those daily reminders that we're greeted with each day, those are the things that weigh on us. And those are the things with this big idea that through the stimulation, through the epidural stimulation of one spinal cord, that we're finding out that all of these issues are being improved and are being enhanced. Well, after seeing Star Wars and, and watching robots and now seeing the robots in the medical world, I really believe that if they use the same technology on robots, that, that they should be able to help people 
who are um, challenged this way. I, I just think I that, agree. I, I always think about Lee Majors. Remember the $6 million man? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's a throwback. I'm giving a little throwback today, but that's a perfect example. And I, I think along those lines, when we saw that way back when, it was just like unheard of. And yeah, this is TV. Now we think about like the $6 million man, or we think about robotics and there's exoskeletons that are out there and which people are up and walking with that you know there's a lot of technology now that is giving people um, a second chance with regards to having that extraordinary i don't mean ordinary or just surviving in life i mean extraordinary quality of life i mean thriving in the face of their adversity and um it's just exciting to see where it is that we're coming and how far we've come but yet how far how far we still have to go and and the journey is getting more interesting every day well you are so special i'll just tell everybody again you're listening to this um marvelous uh young man scott chesney who is a speaker you can hear that he's a coach and a consultant and ambassador for the christopher and dana reeve foundation they are located in short hills new jersey and scott is calling in from verona and he uh, actually he told his story that after awakening to paralysis at the age of 15 from a sudden spinal stroke, Scott has amassed a resume of transformational experiences, powerful insights, and inspiring stories that cut to the core of the human spirit. And if you want to contact him, you can either go to the website is Scott Chesney, C-H-E-S-N-E-Y dot com, or to paralyze, see, paralysis.org if you want more information. Now, we we really are very happy to hear that someone like you can go to people who are have probably no hope. I mean, I would think that a lot of people you meet, uh, you know, they've been this way and they say, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that, and yet they see what you've been doing, and and I guess you have a lot of people on Facebook and 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 different ways that you can inspire, and that's what people need. They need to have a mentor, someone who. Can say yes, you can, and let's take one tiny little bit today, and let's let's do that. And so, are you the only organization in the the world or the country that does what you do? Uh, no, you know we we are the best. I'm going to say we're the the most comprehensive. Is that we've brought everything under one roof. So uh, again, it could be someone who visits. Um, our Paralysis Resource Center or our foundation in Short Hills. But you know what? We're, we're having the most uh, effective ways that through the Internet, through communication, our information specialists, our, our peer and family support program. I told you about our Quality of Life Grants program, our advocacy work, our military and veterans program. I mean, we're, we're reaching people. Um, we have um, people who uh, speak different languages who can help you with your issues, and we're getting inquiries each and every day. So we're, we're trying to reach out um, to as many people as possible and, and being able to respond. And that's the beautiful thing is that we will get the answers to you um, as quickly as possible. And whether it's someone who's uh, newly injured and is looking for rehab and looking for more information, we can connect them with the right people. If it's someone who's like myself, 30 years post-op, and maybe there's some secondary conditions that I'm dealing with is that you know, if there's people that they can connect me with who can really help me to make those adjustments that I might need to my life and everything in between. And um, well, we, we talk so much um, with regards to this word hope, and, and I love it. It's a great acronym. I need to hold on. Possibilities exist. And while I'm all about hope, I, I realize is that, you know what, life is tough. And, you know, you factor in a disability, but if you don't have a disability, it's tough. And it, it, it gets back to that attitude, but I, I always say is that, you know what, each and every day for 30 years, I have awakened to a waiting wheelchair. I wake to a waiting wheelchair. It's just there waiting for me. I've tried to simplify my life so much in which I say every time I get in that chair, which has been every day for 30 years, every day I get in that chair, guess what? That's showing up for life. That's half the battle for me. Um, the other half of the battle are the choices I make with regards to where I'm going to go in that wheelchair. And sometimes I'm going to go forward. Sometimes I'm going to go backwards. And even see now I realize that even when I go backwards, there's something to learn. There's something to grow on. 
there's something that can help me learn more about my life, the life of others, take me forward to the point where, you know, I, I get excited now about where my journey's going to, who am I going to meet next? Where's my journey going to go? Mm. So I don't have, I, I tell people, and it's not just, you know, wow, it's motivational and it feels good. It, it, it's my way of life now. I don't have bad days anymore, Nina. I refuse to have a bad day. But boy, do I have challenging moments? Absolutely. I live every day with pain in my legs. Um, most people have no feeling. I have feeling that is, is if I focus on nothing else but that, guess what? It would be really, really painful. Um, you have, wait, have let me stop you. You have pain in your legs. I have so pain in my legs. That's um, it. So it's, so you still have feeling there. Isn't that unusual? There's a connection. It's not the same type of pain. It's almost like when your foot falls asleep, uh, but about 50 times more intense. Hmm. So if you were to kind of touch my leg, I would know that you were there, but it wouldn't feel like that normal feeling that I have on other parts of my body. And they asked me when I first became paralyzed. And again, I, I had a stroke and it, was, it wasn't the accident. It wasn't the injury. It wasn't a clear cutting of the spinal cord. So it's just there's still a connection that's being made there. But I made a choice. And it gets back to our greatest power, our power to choose. I chose to say, you know what, I'd rather have some feeling in my life and no feeling at all. And so I've learned to live with that. But I have I have moments each and every day of pain, moments of sadness, moments of depression. All that fills my every day. But I will tell you again is that for every one thing that is challenging, and rightfully so about my life or anyone else's life, I'm going to tell you that there's 10,000 things that are wonderful about our lives. And that's where we can tap into that strength, our courage, and find that strength to make that shift, to say, hey, you know what? I am not about these limitations. I'm about all this that's possible on the other side. I'm so much more than the physical use of my legs. And to your listeners out there, you are so much more than your aging body. That spirit of yours is young. That mind of yours can be young. That joy that you can find in life could still be just as rewarding as it once was. But you have to make that choice. Because with this power to choose comes the power to really create a life beyond our wildest dreams. Or with this power to choose, guess what? We can we can choose, and many people do, and not to judge them. Choose a life of misery. Choose to focus on what's not going well in our lives. So look at the glass as half empty rather than half full. I have to ask you a question. So do you have a very strong upper body? Very, very strong. And so so you do a lot of exercise for that, don't you? I do a lot of exercise, but this is one thing, too, that uh, I'm very proud of, and it's still a part of my life, is that I was an athlete. played football, basketball, and baseball before I became paralyzed and still enjoy playing a lot of wheelchair sports right, and watching my kids play sports. It's that athlete that I wake up to each and every day as well that has a discipline over his body. Even though half of it is not responding to me right now, there's still things that I need to do to care for it. Still things that I need to do to help um, with the stretching, with the ligaments, with everything else to keep it toned, to keep it stretched, stre- uh, stretched and prepare my body. See, I want my body to be prepared for one day, when, not if, that day comes when maybe I get that phone call and it's time to maybe do something, some type of intervention that might help repair my spinal cord. I want to prepare my body as much as possible. But you know what? I've also come to the place I need to wear, and this is because of the Reed Foundation and people like Christopher, is that that day may never come. And so my quality of life is so important to me. I have two amazing children. See, in addition to being told I would never walk again, Anita, I was told that I'd never be able to father my own children. Huh. Now, again, I can't speak on behalf of anyone else, but being able to father my own children is more important to me than walking again. I'd be blessed if I could adopt a child, and it's still something my wife and I talk about doing someday, but I wanted to exhaust everything from a biological sense. And so I am proud to say I have a 13-year-old daughter and a 10-year-old son. Call them in and possible. Call them whatever it is that you want. All I know is that they're two shining examples to me of what's not only possible in my life, but what's possible in the life of any human being. 
I'm sitting here with goosebumps. I was thinking about what you were saying and thinking about all the wonderful veterans coming back with terrible injuries. Do you have special uh, places that you work with the veterans? Absolutely. Well, we're through the Reed Foundation. We have a military and veterans program, an MVP program, and we provide critical local and national information and resources to active military and veterans living with paralysis as well as their families, their friends, and their caregivers. Um, this is this is different. I mean, while we might be sitting in similar situations with regards to our levels of paralysis, is that I'm almost uh, in awe and have had a chance to go to many VAs and speak to many veterans and just to be in awe, to know of the mindset that they had to have to serve in our military. What I'm trying to get now is to help them to bring that mindset into living life with their disability. And what blew my mind, and I'll tell you a quick story, Anita, is that when I first spoke to a group of veterans with disabilities, all of whom, probably close to 500 individuals, down in Biloxi, Mississippi, is that there was a gentleman in the front row, a paraplegic like myself, and about five minutes before I took the stage, is that when I was preparing, um, he just looked over at me and he said, I'm sorry, Mr. Chesney, I'm not going to be able to stay here. And I said, um, are you feeling okay? I mean, can I do anything for you? He's like, no, I feel fine. And I said, if you don't mind me asking, why, 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 why are you leaving then? He said, I don't feel deserving of being in your audience tonight. Oh, my gosh, you I, are kidding. He said, he, I, I was, I, and I said, come again? And he said, sir, he said, I let my country down. I got <sighs> hit by a bullet. It grazed my spinal cord when I was in Afghanistan. And it left me paralyzed from my waist down to my toes. He said, I let my country down. Oh. I can no longer serve my country. And I, I was just so taken back by what he said. I was oh. just stunned. But oh, I said my. to him, I said, listen, can I just share something with you before you leave? And he said, absolutely, please do so. And I said, sir, my, my belief is, is that if your life was meant to be taken out on that battlefield, it would have been. And there are many people whose lives have had, and now they've gone off the places. Um, heaven, wherever you believe that we go, and they're doing even more work now, maybe on that level that we can't fully understand. I said, because your life wasn't taken, I still believe that there's a place and a purpose for you here. And I said, maybe it's to serve this country in another capacity. It's got, you know, even I, bigger now. I, I, I'm in tears. Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm in tears with this world. story, and we've run out of time, but I want the privilege of having you back again another time. May I call you? You got it. Scott, you are, you are great. And I went right there. I've had goosebumps. I've had tears and I'm so happy that they found you and that you're there. And we, this is going to go on YouTube and we'll, we'll be in touch with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anita. All the best to you. Yes, the same to you. Bye, Scott.